have uh, the uh, constitutional silver coins, dimes and quarters at 275 over spot per ounce, otherwise known as junk silver. The backdate silver Canadian maple leaves at $3.25 over the price of silver. And of course, the $10 uh, Liberty gold coin. And I believe that's AU grade at $34 over melt. Um, my favorite way to own gold. This is a situation where when you realize that almost $9 trillion of government debt this year must be refinanced over the next 12 months at a time when China and the Fed supposedly are selling treasuries, the Fed doing quantitative tightening and the Chinese at a record amounts, uh, $22.7 billion in treasury sold in February. And we know we've talked a lot about the fact that it appears as though they're replacing their treasury holdings with gold because of the the lack of counterparty risk, the, the, the no sanctioning risk, the no default risk, the no confiscation risk, and not only that, a market that has massively outperformed the bond market. So we are inundating the system in many, many ways, putting it to a point where we're adding a trillion dollars in debt every 90 days. Um, you know, it, it took uh, 200 years to do it the first time. We are reaching that point where it just becomes unsustainable. So I think it's important to understand that when you talk about the fact that they estimate that $11 trillion in bonds will need to be sold every year between now and 2030, in an environment where we are creating more and more and more debt, we are not ingratiating ourselves throughout the world. You know, we talked last week about uh, how, how Janet Yellen threatened China with sanctions if they were to aid the, the Russian war machine in any capacity. We talked about how stupid it was to do that, but even equally as stupid the week before in Brazil, she said in Brazil, a member of the BRICS said, yeah, we need to, you know, just sanctioning the Iranian a assets is not enough, we, uh, or the Russian assets rather is not enough. We need to confiscate the 300 bil 380 billion in uh, Russian assets and use it to fund the Ukrainian effort. How stupid that was. Well, here she is, at it again and threatening um, uh, uh, Pakistan with sanctions if it builds a pipeline to import gas from Iran. So here we are going around the world as a broken, insolvent country, a country who just voted to give another $60 billion to the Ukraine, $200 billion we've given them at, with no congressional oversight since 2022, February of 2022. Um, and more and more money we're giving away to to fight wars that we have no business being in as we are broke and we are insolvent and our entitlements are increasing exponentially our obligations are increasing increasing exponentially and we think that we can sell 11 trillion dollars worth of bonds every year 9 trillion this year that needs to be refinanced at much higher levels the question is if the fed and china number one and two in treasury holdings are no longer buying treasuries in fact are shedding them who the hell is going to buy you know, Jim Willie is an interesting dude, Dunnigan, and he's a guy that is a little bit more fringe in terms of the things he says, yet he seems to be right all the time. And he's, it's a very interesting point he brought up that he believes that um, the United Kingdom, who is rapidly approaching number two, taking over the place of China in our treasury holdings, is being funneled under the table money to do this, along with Ireland and the Cayman Islands. And you know, these are things that where there is a fine line between conspiracy and reality. But the point really is who wants to buy treasuries of a country that is losing its grip on its world reserve status, that is going around the world in a very hypocritical manner, at least in terms of the way the, uh, the rest of the world looks at it, and imposing sanctions where we can give money to the Ukraine, but China cannot give it to Russia. You know, th this is a problem. And, and when you look at our level of indebtedness that is is reaching hockey stick phase where it's moving up parabolically, you have to start to wonder at what point do these sanctions really become um, not only uh, lacking teeth, but become counterproductive. Um, you know, the point of, of diminished returns, I guess you could say, I think we're already there. And I just want people to spend a few minutes and Google the Cloward Piven strategy and think about it in regards to exactly what is happening in this country. And I think you'll walk away saying, not only does it make sense, but when you realize Jared Bernstein, who I believe is the architect of, of the loss of the Petro status, this is what he's been talking about for years. You put it together with the teachings of Cloward Piven, where he and Obama both went to, uh, to you know, Columbia, it starts to, you start to think, you know, is that line between conspiracy and reality 
that big? Uh, is there a possibility that that this is a, a bigger picture where you destabilize? The, and I've said this without talking about Clower Piven, you destabilize the outside, you destabilize the inside. But it's all seems very thought out and well planned and interesting when you put these people, including Bernstein and Obama, as people who understand this, um, you start to wonder what the heck's going on. So I know you've talked about it before. I'd love to get your two cents on it. But to me, it was very eye opening. Yeah, we have uh, the uh, constitutional silver coins, dimes and quarters at 275 over spot per ounce, otherwise known as junk silver. The backdate silver Canadian maple leaves at $3.25 over the price of silver. And of course, the $10 uh, Liberty gold coin. And I believe that's AU grade at $34 over melt. Um, my favorite way to own gold uh, is, is the pre 33 coins. And I want people to understand that 34 over melt, I mean, you're talking dirt cheap. Um, in 2008, when it was obvious that Obama was going to win, Premiums on these coins went parabolic, and with $1,000 gold, the bid price for an AU-grade $10 Liberty would have been reflective of, um, you know, roughly fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars $1,500 gold. You would have had a 40 to 45 to 50% premium on these coins if we're buying them back from you. And the upside potential in those coins is extraordinary in the respect that they're true pieces of American history, Americana, um, and, and you know, they've always been my favorite way to own gold. But after 2008, you know, 2008, 9, and 10, the premiums got so high that I ignored them, told everyone to swap these coins and switch them into, um, into uh, gold bullion. Because if you can get a 40 or 50% premium for a circulated $10 Liberty or a 70% premium for a 64-grade St. Gauden, now that was unheard of. And so I would go to people's houses with, you know, I'd call them up and say, listen, you got 1,064 saints that you bought from me over the last 20 years. I'm going to come fly out to you and I'm going to buy those 1,000 saints and sell them to the market and hand deliver you 1,700 gold eagles. It's never been this way. You know, most of my career, it would have been a difference of 10 or 15 or 20 percent, not 70. So, you know, there are times when these coins make great sense to buy. Sometimes they're too expensive kind of like the Silver Eagles were the last several years. And other times when the premium's correct, then it becomes advantageous to go that direction. Again, if I'm buying gold, this is as good as you're going to find as far as I'm concerned. Um, and I, I love them a lot. So anyways, just a little, just a little tidbit on that anyway.